Shalom Aleichem from First Yehudim Messianic Temple here in Lake Placid, Florida. I am his servant, Maria Simpson. Welcome again to Hebraic Roots. Uh, the teaching tonight is titled, The Whole Armor of Elohim, or God, or Yahweh. Uh, so with that in do, uh, brothers and sisters, I hope that you have your, your Bibles with you so you can confirm everything that is being that is going to be taught tonight. Uh, so with that in do, let me uh, let me do a, a quick prayer because uh, I have a lot to I have a lot to teach you today. So, Abakadosh, I thank you today, Abakadosh, that you are permitting your Ruha Hakadash moving, Abakadosh, from the four winds. Abakadosh, may you give everyone that have ears to hear. Hear what is being, it's going to be spoken today, Abba Kadosh, as the Ruha ministers to us, Abba, in these last days. Abba Kadosh also opened their understanding so they can understand your word. I thank you, Abba Kadosh, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. So with that do, brothers and sisters, if you can go with me to the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 6, verse number, starting on number 10. Now I'm going to read this first, and then uh, I go. I will go one by one. Really, what is Paul? Because the one that's, that's speaking here is Paul, Raf Shaul. He's speaking here to the Israelite congregation, and let's see what what he really meant when he says that we don't. I'm sorry, that to put on the whole armor of Elohim. So uh, on Ephesians chapter six, verse number ten is, and it's written, "Finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahweh." And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Elohim that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Elohim, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about the truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elohim, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And we'll stop there. Now, brothers and sisters, I know that, that many of you have read this many, many, many times. And, you know, we often open our minds, have opened our minds and souls to what is called a global cessation. Ultimately, leading to the worship of man instead of the creator. The same mindset and mentality prevailed to follow us into the churches, which is a mindset which is called Roman Greco philosophy mindset gears towards the tree of knowledge of good and evil, satisfying the minds and the intellect. Now, whereas the Hebrew mindset gears us towards the tree of life, satisfying the hearts and issues of life. One of the most misunderstood, uh, misunderstand, uh, misunderstood regarding the whole armor of Elohim is excessively caused by a Greek Roman culture mindset. Okay? It's, it's like, um, since I know how to speak Spanish, when I say a saying in Spanish and I try to translate it in English, it really doesn't sound, it doesn't sound right. Or, or a, a Spanish into English or English to Spanish because it is a culture. It is a culture mindset. So in order to understand the Bible, because originally it was uh, Aramaic Hebrew, we have to have the mind of Yeshua. We have to have a Hebraic mindset. Okay? Many comment, uh, commentaries compare the whole armor of Elohim with the armor of a Roman, with Roman soldiers. But the problem is this. Paul was not referring to the Roman armor at all. That's not, see, I'm going to show you a picture in a few minutes. He was not 
referring to a Roman soldier, okay, at all. He was actually making reference to an ancient Hebraic armor, which is called priestly garments, a heavenly armor. Paul did not come up with the idea of the full armor of Elohim on his own. He drew his wisdom and understanding from the Old Testament, the Tanakh or the Torah. Okay? Now, I remember when I was, when I used to, when I used to intercede and when I was in Christianity. Okay? Um... I used to I used to intercede and you know be all loud and oh yeah devil and you know all this and blah 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 and yes I was a I I am a very inter a good ex intercessory prayer but that is not that's not the way it sh that's not the the way that's not the way it should be done because we have to understand that. when Yeshua was full of the ruah hakadosh of the Holy Spirit and he went into the desert. To be tempted by Satan for 40 days and 40 nights. You will never see there that they were not. Yeshua was not screaming. Yeshua was having a conversation with Hasatan. And the conversation that he was having. That, that he was having with Hasatan. Was really coming against Hasatan. Because he was there to tempt him with the word of Yahweh. If you notice that the that Yeshua constantly was quoting scriptures of the Torah when he was speaking to Hasatan. Now, the word Hasatan or Satan means adversary. It means enemy. We've been taught in Christianity that you have to, when you intercede and you have to fight, you have to good the good fight of faith. And see, we we have to understand why is Paul saying what he's saying? It's not to Yeshua never screamed. The only time Yeshua screamed was only once. It's really when he was coming against the Pharisees, calling them hypocrites. But when Yeshua was speaking, when Yeshua was coming against Satan's temptation, he was not screaming that. As a matter of fact, when the man was possessed with legions of demons, Yeshua did not scream at him. He just says, come out of him, into the pigs or into the swines. Okay? So... We have to understand what it means to, to put on the full armor of Elohim. This is very important. Because see, when we're going into spiritual warfare and we're putting the armor, we cannot be thinking as a Roman soldier. Because Roman soldiers really don't know nothing about Yahweh. Roman soldiers came against human beings. They did not come against principalities. So let's start with number one. It says to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, what is the breastplate of, uh, of righteousness? See, what Paul is speaking here, and let me show you now a picture. We have two, we have two pictures. Can you see the two pictures here? Can you see it? We have on the side, we have a, a priest, okay, a Levite priest. And then here we have a Roman soldier. Well, most of us have gone into warfare dressed like this. And that is not what Paul is speaking about. He's speaking about this. Now, what is the breastplate of righteousness? Okay. You can find this on Exodus chapter 28, verse number 4. And these are the garments which they shall make a, breast, a breastplate, an ephod, and so on and so on. I don't want to read, I don't want to read the whole thing because there's a lot of reading today. So see, the breastplate is what went in front of the priest. Can you see here? Can, can you see here? See, that breastplate is also, it's got 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's what that represents. Okay? Let me show you again. Can you see that? Can you see that? Look at that. That's what he's talking about. See, even though there's no more um, Levitical priesthood, Yeshua is, our, is, our, is a high priest. But this is what Paul is talking about. Because see, 
in order to understand this, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to teach you the best I can, to as simple as I can, because Yeshua says, please go with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. He says that he is the king of kings. He has made us kings and priests. Now, how can I say this? Well, go with me to uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Uh, verse number, verse number, let me see which one it is. Uh, I believe it's number, blessed be read it, that's my first thing, okay, and the spirit, okay, and then, okay, and verse number six, and has made us kings and priests, has made us kings and priests unto Elohim, his father, to him be glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, see, this is where it says he is the king of kings. Talking about us. We are a royal priesthood. And, and a little farther down, I'll, I'll give you the scriptures on there. Now, you can find all this armor of Elohim in the book of Exodus, Shemot in Hebrew, okay? Chapter 28, all, you can read it and you can see where it goes, Ephesians chapter 6, all, that is the armor of Elohim, okay? Look at what it says on Exodus chapter 28, verse number 15. And thou shalt make the breastplate, breastplate of judgment uh, with cunning works. In other words, the breastplate is not a Roman soldier, but it is a priest. It is a, today, what we call pastors, maybe some rabbis, okay? Because on that breastplate are the 12 stones, the 12 tribe of Israel. Even though the Yeshua is praying for us because he is our high priest and he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, but he has made, he has anointed some to bring this truth. And see, this truth is not for everybody. This truth is only for those that have ears to hear what the Rucha, what the Spirit of Yahweh is saying in these last days. Now, you can read with me Exodus chapter 22 to verse 30, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to skip. And look at what it says on verse 29. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel in the breastplate of judgment over his heart. Verse 30. And you shall put the breastplate of judgment that is called Urim and the Thumim. It's two stones that went inside the breastplate. And they shall be over Aaron's heart when he goes before Yahweh. So Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel over his heart before Yahweh continuously. And it means all the time. See, the children of Yahweh, we are all supposed to be priests. We are supposed to be teaching this truth. But the reason that many are not doing so is because we have never been taught. This is what Yeshua is doing through his Ruha, through his spirit in these last days. He is restoring. What is he restoring? He is restoring the two remnants from both houses. Remnants. The few that have from both houses to come to this truth. And that is biblically speaking. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 16 and 17, it is written, for he put on righteousness as a, breath as a breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was, glad, and was glad with zeal as a cloak. Isaiah chapter 11, 4 and 5. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with uh, yeah, equity. With the meek and the earth, he shall strike the earth with the mouth of his, uh, the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips, and he shall slay the wicked. 
Righteousness shall be the belt in his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. And in a little bit, I'll tell you what all this means. Now, for you, brother and sisters, that maybe this is something new to you. What is righteousness? See, we've been taught that in Christianity, the righteousness is when you accept Jesus. When you say Jesus and you go to church and you read the Bible and, and, and you know, you, you help the poor and you give your tithes. And see, all that is, is yeah, you're supposed to do all that, which is, is true. But let's see what kind of righteousness is he talking about. Because, see, either we believe the Bible or we don't. We cannot just take, we cannot just take some, some things of the Bible and say, well, I believe in this. And then takes other things and says, I don't believe in this. Because that is not of Yahweh. That is of man. Either we want to know the truth or we want to be right. See, that, that's very simple. So what is righteousness? Righteousness, if you go with me to the book of Psalms, chapter, um, chapter 119, Psalms 119, verse number 172, it is written, My tongue shall speak thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Verse 142, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And the truth will make you free. So righteousness really says commandments. So the breast of righteousness really, when, when, when a priest had it, it means that the 12 tribe were supposed to be walking in righteousness in his commandments. Well, the, the commandments are done away with. Well, it's been embedded in, in, in our heads, in our minds so much that, you know, sometimes when somebody tells you, you're not going to make it, you're not going to do it, it comes a point that even though it's not true, it will come a point that you will believe it. So we need to ask, really, Yeshua to give, us, to give us the sermon and to give us understanding of the scriptures. Because there's too much hanky-panky going around in the word. And see, there's only one truth and nothing can come against that. It says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, in Hebrew is Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 6, 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all, the, all these commandments before Yahweh our Elohim, as he has commanded us Exodus 28 1 1 1 through 4 now take your Aaron your brother and his sons this is Yahweh speaking to Moses and his sons with him from among the children of Israel that he may minister to me as priest Aaron and his sons because Aaron and his sons were from the tribe of Levi even though that is done away with because Yeshua is the high priest and is from the tribe of Judah and that is another teaching. Now, the armor of Yahweh, which Paul is speaking in, in the book of Ephesians, really is talking about the holy garments of a, of a, of a priest, of a pastor, of a child of Yahweh, of somebody that's in leadership that's supposed to bring this truth. Remember, in the time of Elijah, there was only one Elijah. Elijah. But there were 250 false, false prophets of Baal. We have a lot of false prophets today. And see, we need to know who are we going to follow. Are we going to follow man that really wants to be right? Or we want to follow the Ruha HaKadash? That is guiding us to all the truth of Yahweh. Because the truth will always make us free. Now, in Exodus chapter 28, 1 through 4, number two, uh, verse 2 says, And you shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother, for the glory and for beauty. And verse 3, because he will be my priest. See, Yeshua says, and I read it already in the book of Revelation, that he has made us kings and priests. Every child of Yahweh, every supposed to be teaching this. And if you're not, well, maybe you haven't been taught. Or maybe, you know, um, you want to learn. Or perhaps you don't have anywhere to go. Well, I, I'm going to tell you. Put it in prayer and he will, he will take you to a place 
where they do teach this. Because see, your mind and your heart has to be coincide so you, so all this truth, so you can have all this revelation knowledge. You have to have hunger for the truth. Now, these priests and these garments were supposed to consecrate a priest. See, a tali does not make me holier than you. My covering, my head covering, does not make me holier than you. It's respect. When I wear this, it's because his name, I, I bear his name. I, it's, it, and when I touch the, the, the tzitzit, his, his, his name, his name. And it's, and it's not that this is a protect. This is what it is. It's reverence. It's respect. It's called a prayer shawl. The blue represents the gold, the white. It, 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 it all has a meaning. The breastplate really is what it is. Is, is the holy garments. Is the holy garments. Absol obviously, Paul was speaking reference to the holy garments of the priesthood called by Elohim, not the armor of unholy, violent, merciless, uh, merciless, merciless Roman uh, soldiers thirsty to torture others and kill people. It says that he has made us kings and priests. And I already read it in Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. But please go with me to the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse number, uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Royal represents kingship, priesthood. A holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show you forth your praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in time past you were not a people, but now the people of Elohim, which in, uh, had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. Please go with me to the book of Revelation chapter number uh, 5. Revelation 5 verse number 10. And has made us unto Elohim kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. He's talking here in the millennium. This is, this is John when he had the vision. This is John speaking. He has made us priests, kings, and priests. See, we have to understand the, the, what is being said. Chapter, uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse number 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resur resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of Elohim, of Messiah, and shall reign with him a thousand years. This is in the millennium. Now, he says we are going to, we were supposed to be a peculiar treasure above all the people of the world. Not because we're better. Not, no, no. It's because he, he, we are supposed to serve Yahweh. And in return, we're supposed to be teaching this truth all over. Exodus 19, verse 6. Verse 6, and it says, And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. And I already show you in the book of Revelation. And a holy nation. The holy means set apart. There are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. See, this is... Not everybody is willing to learn this. Because really you have to have a special anointing that Yahweh places upon you so you can receive this, so you can not only learn it, but you can teach it. The priests are the righteous, which are called covenant keepers, before Yahweh. They cannot play favoritism towards the rich and despise the poor. They are to, they have to pray for every tribe in the community regardless of their financial status. That goes with that today. When did you ever see a Roman soldier praying for anybody? Come on. A high priest does not, is not holier than thou attitude towards others. He ministers to everyone and hear their names 
and burdens over his heart. There is no discrimination against anyone. Let's look at Yeshua as our high priest. What is righteousness in the sight of Elohim? Is to keep his commandments. The commandments does not save you. Please, if some of you have been hearing this, or maybe some of you have said this, the commandments, the Torah, the feast doesn't save you, is Yeshua HaMashiach. But what is righteousness in the sight of Yahweh is his commandments. Because he is his commandment. He is the commandments. Yahweh is the commandments. Deuteronomy 6.25, then it will be righteousness for us. If we are careful, careful to observe all these commandments before Yahweh our Elohim, as he has commanded us. Please go with me to the book of Luke. Uh, Luke verse, chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I know that some of you probably are hearing this for the very first, first time. But please give, tell them to give you um, understanding on what is being taught today. Look at what it says in Luke chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. Do you remember Zechariah? Zechariah was the father of, of uh, John the Baptist. Zechari uh, John the Baptist had a mother named Elizabeth. Zechariah was the high priest in the time uh, in the time before Yeshua, in the time of Yeshua, or before he was born. And look at this: There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah, of the course of Abia. And his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before Elohim, walking in all his commandments and ordinances of Yahweh. And they were blameless. They were perfect. See, not blameless or perfect the way we think it is. It means they were covenant keepers. They were commandment keepers. They were feast keepers. So this in Yahweh's eyes is blameless, is perfect. Yeshua said, be perfect because my Father in heaven is perfect. But a Roman soldier does not have any righteousness on his breastplate. Neither does he desire to keep the commandments of Yahweh. It also says, and let's continue in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Shut your feet with a preparation of the gospel of peace. You can find this. In Exodus chapter 28, 32 to 35, when the high priest will go into the Holy of Holies, he will remove his shoes because the place that he was stepping was holy ground. See, and this also happened to Moses when he was getting close to the burning bush. Exodus 3, 5, and then he says, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for your place where you stand is holy ground. Priest ministers to Yahweh without wearing any shoes or sandals. They walk barefoot on the floors on the temple courts. However, they are always ready to bring good news, proclaiming peace, bring glad tidings and good things, and proclaim salvation. And the word salvation means Yeshua. A Roman soldier wears shoes, but he doesn't wear shoes. He wears comeback boots. He wears boots, but brings bad news, and he is proclaiming war. Isaiah 52, 7, how beautiful uh, uh, upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good, th good news, good tidings. What is the shield of faith? Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, when Yahweh is speaking to when Yahweh is speaking to uh, um, Abraham, Yahweh came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. You can find this in Psalms chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. Yahweh, how they have increased who trouble me. This is talking, most likely is talking about David. But you, Yahweh, are a shield for me. You can read this in your own time. How does Elohim shield his people? The best picture is from the Exodus when Israel came out of, of, of Egypt. 
You can find this in Exodus 13, verse 21 and 20, uh, 22. And Yahweh went before them by day with a pillar of cloud, this is the shield, to lead the way by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night. And you can also reference this in Exodus 14, 19 and 20. And, and, and he was behind them, before them and behind them, with a pillar of cloud went before them and stood behind them. So it came between the, uh, the, uh, the camp of the Egyptian and the camp of Israel. Thus it was the cloud of darkness to the one, and it came light by night to the other. So, the, so that one did not come near the other all that night. In other words, the pillars were shields to protect Israel. That shield also is one of the armors. One of the one of the one of the armors. It says, "Be." It says, "Be full, be whole." Had the whole armor of Yahweh. It's not talking the the armor of a Roman soldier. When Elo, when Yahweh Elohim shields us. It is a complete divine full protection from all sides, top and bottom, 360 degrees, all around about. But the Roman shield is just human, partial protective and fully vulnerable to attacks. Do you really think a Roman soldier can really come against principalities? Can come on spiritual wickedness in high places? You tell me, do you really think so? So see, when we're barking like a dog or like a chihuahua, because we're interceding, we need to be very careful what we're doing. Because the full armor of Yahweh, yes, it's the blood of Yeshua. Many, many of you probably say, oh, the blood of Yeshua is over me. Well, the, the blood of Yeshua, the only thing it cleanses you, from your sins and saves you. But you know what? Then you're going to be stuck there. You have to, you have to learn what is, what is being taught here. So what is the helmet of salvation in, in, uh, in the book of Ephesians? Well, you can, look this, uh, you can look this up in Exodus 28, 36, 41. The helmet of salvation. Okay, can you all see this? Can you all see this? Okay, can you see this? Okay, this helmet of salvation, this helmet of salvation right here, it has like a, like a gold, like a gold strip. Can you see it? Okay, that, that, that helmet of salvation, it has an inscription that says, holy unto Yahweh. It means kadosh to Yahweh. Kadosh to Yahweh. The word holiness means kadosh, set apart. Holiness to Yahweh. Yahweh himself will separate the holy ones from the unholy. His name shall be on the foreheads of the righteous saints. Please go with me to the book of Revelation chapter number 20. And the 144, before the tribulation, or before the seals, before Satan comes down, he says, I am, let me seal the 144 and let me seal them with my, with my name, my initials. Yohave. In Revelation chapter 20, verse number 4. It is written. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them. The judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. For the witness of Yeshua, and for the word of Elohim, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Messiah a thousand years. Chapter 22, verse 4. The last um, revelation. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And their name shall be in their foreheads. That is, that is what the helmet of salvation is. Salvation means Yeshua. 
Yahshua. Some say Yeshua. Some say Yahua. Okay. I'm not here to, you know, to tell you if you're saying the right way. Or, I know, okay, whether it's Yeshua or Yahshua, which means Yahweh saves. And some say, well, you know, Yahweh this and that. Yahweh saves. Shua means saves. Yah. Yah. Or Shua. Shua, Yah. Yahweh. Yahshua. Yahweh saves. What is the sword of the Spirit? The sword of the Spirit is the Torah. Is the Aleph Ta, is the word of Elohim. In the beginning was the word, and, in the, and the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. So the word means Aleph Ta, the word means that Torah. It means his word, it means that it's alive, it's alive, his word. It means, uh, Isaiah 49, 2, he has made my mouth like a sharp so, uh, sword. Isaiah eleven four. he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of Elohim is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Revelation 1.16. He had his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Why two-edged sword? Because two-edged sword, even in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. Two-edged sword means Old Testament, New Testament. It also means that it's for who? For Judah, Jews, and for Ephraim, Christianity. Two-edged sword. Two-edged sword. That is what the Bible is. It means Old Testament, New Testament. That's what it means. Not a physical Roman sword of violence and killing and destroying others, but a sharp two-edged sword, Old Testament, New Testament, out of the mouth, proclaiming the word of the Torah, of Yahweh, of Yahweh. Very often, it is reciting the priestly blessing, to bless others. Where can you find this? Roman Numbers 6, 22, 27. This is the way you shall bless Israel. This is what Yahweh said to Moses. So Moses told Aaron, it's called the, uh, the ironic blessing. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yah Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and, and give you his shalom. And I believe it's, it's, it's like this. This is what my husband does, like this, which is the sheen. Now, Ephesians 6, through, when it's talking about the whole armor of Elohim, we need to remove the unholy Roman armor and put on the, the, uh, the holy priestly garments. And this is how the royal priesthood done is called, this is how they do spiritual warfare. When Yeshua went into the garden, I'm sorry, into the desert, he did not do spiritual warfare with Hasatan screaming and yelling. Oh, I, I rebuke you, Hasatan. Oh, yeah, yeah, I rebuke you and all this. That's not, that's not kosher. I used to do that. And I, I see, I remember, and, I, and, and to me that's crazy. Because, you know what? You have the word of power in your mouth. And Yahweh says, let there be light. Yeshua said to the man that was possessed with, with the legions of demons, come out of, come out of him. But see, that is when you are full and you will have the whole armor of Yahweh. When you don't have the full armor of Yahweh, you know what you do? That's crazy. That's, he's teaching not to do that. Praying always with all prayers and supplications. Most Roman soldiers did not spend any time on prayers for themselves and almost never pray for the cause <laughs> of the poor or the needy. Only the priests were called to pray and make intercession to Elohim on behalf of others. You can find this in Exodus 34, 8 and 9. O Yahweh, let Yahweh I pray. And he's, and he's praying. The priests and the, and, and the high priests. Even though Yeshua is praying because he is our high priest. But we are priests. We are kings and priests according to the Bible. Psalms 82, 1 through 4. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the, the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. In Christianity today, we have prayer warriors and intercessory generals. 
banging spiritual warfare against spiritual principality, against power, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual wick wickedness in the heavenly places. But very few of these people can stand righteous and blameless before Yahweh, Kadosh, Holy Elohim. Many have behaved like militants and brutal Roman soldiers, fighting in vain. They are always domineering over others instead of serving others with humility and love. One good example of wearing the wrong armor is David when he fought against Goliath. Saul told David to wear his armor. And David said to him, I can't walk in this. He put it out. He can't walk. He was like, I can't walk in this. So what did David do? David took it off. See, we need to be David and take off the Roman soldiers. Then David said to the Philistine, you come with a sword. See, now this is, this is a Roman soldier. You come to me with a Roman, with a sword, with a sword, with a spear and a javelin. But I come in the name of Yahweh Sabaoth of armies, the Elohim of armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day Yahweh will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And that all the earth may know that there is an Elohim in Israel, then all the assemblies shall know that Yahweh does not say with a sword and a spear, for the battle is Yahweh, and he will give it un, unto us in, in our hands. He will give it to us because vengeance is his. David did not use the armor of Saul. He came in the name of Yahweh of hosts, and the battle is Yahweh. And he will fight for us and give us victory. We only need to stand still and see his salvation called Yeshua. Most of them are not gracious they're not merciful and kind. I'm talking about other brothers. I'm, I really am speaking about those that say they love Yahweh and they love their brotherly. They're not gracious. They're not merciful and they're not kind. And I'm saying most. I'm not saying all. <laughs> With their mouth, they, they praise Yahweh or they praise God. But their heart is really far away from the, from the Elohim of Israel. <laughs> they say they love their brother. And they do love their brother when everything is okay. But when, when their brother needs help, they think and they pretend they don't even know him. These are the ones who put on the who These are the ones who do not put the correct armor of Elohim. David did not use an, uh, the armor of Saul. He came in the name of Yahweh of hosts, and the battle is Yahweh's, and he will, he will fight for us and give us victory. We only need to stand still and see his salvation, because he is Yahweh saves. In Ephesians chapter 6, when it says, put on the whole armor of Elohim, it's talking about the priestly garments, so let us remove the unholy Roman army, I'm sorry, armor. And let us put the holy priestly garments. And this is how the royal priesthood, the spiritual uh, warfare, even today. Because he has called us to be priests for him. Even though there's no temple. Even though there's no Levitical system. Even though not, none of the above. But Yeshua is our high priest and we are his priests. We serve him and teach him this truth. But if somebody is not anointed to bring this to us, how will you know? Second Chronicles 24, uh, chapter 20, verse uh, 14 to 24. This is when there was going to be a battle between um, uh, Levi, the son of Hassan, and, and uh, Hassel, and the son of Zechariah. The, this was a battle. King uh, Jehoshaphat, I'm, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. King Jehoshaphat, that says Yahweh to you, do not be afraid, nor be dismissed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, 
but it's Elohim's. Stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh who is with you. Praise Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, with voices and loud voice. How did they conquer this? How? And you should read this, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 14 to 24. They conquer it through singing to Yahweh. Let me tell you, if you don't know the Shema, learn the Shema. And when you're, when you're having bad dreams or, or, or something, begin just to praise and begin just to say the Shema. And, and maybe next time I'll do, I, I'll do a teaching on the Shema. So when they did this, he appointed those, see, he appointed those who would sing to Yahweh, who should praise the beauty of his holiness in the battle. And they went out before the army, the army and were saying, praise Yahweh for his mercy endures forever. And as they began to sing the praises, Yahweh said, ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. So when Judah came to place overlooking the, world, the wilderness, they looked toward the multitudes, and they were their dead bodies falling on the earth, and no one had escaped. Not by fruitless screaming, not by roaring, not by barking like a dog or yelling, but with a high priest, with, I'm sorry, with a high praises to Yahweh in their mouth and a two-edged sword, which is the Old Testament and New Testament, they shall praise Yahweh and Yahweh set ambushes and destroy their enemies. And the enemies did not escape. Let the high praises of Elohim be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. This honor, this honor, all his saints, praise you, Yahweh. Go with me to one place, and with this I finish. Psalms 149. Psalm 149, verse 149, verse number 8 and 9. 149, 8 and 9. Verse 1. Praise you, Yahweh. Sing unto Yahweh a new song and his praises in the congregation of the saints. The word saint means set apart. Set apart means kadosh or kadushins. Okay? Verse 6. Let the high praises of Elohim be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathens and punishment upon the people. To bind their kings and the chains and their nobles and their fetters of iron. To execute upon them judgment written. This honors, this honor have all the, his saints. Praise ye Yahweh. So brothers and sisters, Yeshua did not fight with Satan. When Peter was possessed with Hasatan, the only thing he says, Satan. Be a done away, Satan. Get me behind. Get behind, Satan. Thank you, brother. So see, when you know that the word, that the Torah, that you are obedient, that you are in his commandments, and yes, you got the blood of Yeshua, and you know who Yeshua is, you know all this, and you are his doing his feast, and you, and you know what? Don't, don't do prayers, or don't do intercessory prayer like this. Can you see that? This is exactly, I don't mean that you should dress like this, okay? Even though before they used to dress like this, it is a metaphor for his commandments, for his feasts, for his Torah. Because the more profound you go into it and you are, you are full of the, of, of, you have the whole armor of Yahweh, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Shalom Aleichem from First Yahudim Messianic Temple. Shalom.